its economy relies heavily on the revenue generated from the oil industry. But in recent years, the country has recorded a high rate of crude oil theft, corruption, poverty, and economic hardship. This is also as a result of the fuel subsidy removed by President Tinubu on assuming office. On the streets, a bag of rice now sells for over 70,000 naira. A paint bucket of gari for about 1,500 naira, amongst others. But there is a public outcry on the government to fix these issues. Many activists and development advocates have called on Nigerians to be patient, one of which is a Nigeria-born U.S. medical practitioner and the national coordinator, Convena Social Rehabilitation Group, who proposed some solutions to addressing these challenges. He joins us via Zoom. Dr. Uludari Marindotti, thank you for joining us on the program. Thanks, Veronica, for having me. Now, you have said Nigerians should be patient. And even the president's son came out to say that Nigerians have to be patient with his father uh, with regards to this, some of the policies being put in place to addressing uh, the challenges we are facing. Uh, but Nigerians are asking how much more time should we give the president as it is. Uh, recall that uh, when he got into office was when he declared subsidy is gone. And since then, we have been seeing the attendant impact and implication on our economy. So much so we saw the protest in Ibadan yesterday. How much time should Nigerians give the president? Uh, thanks a lot, Veronica. You know, uh, I'll first start by saying I'm in the United States. So I don't think I am in a position to tell Nigerians to be patient because, you know, we don't have shortage of food where I am. And, uh, you know, and everybody knows that, you know, went for broke and even went broke to campaign for the president. And, you know, I love the president. And, uh, you know, all my activities, even when I made the I don't think you're a bad video, I did it to support for Latin Nouveau, you know. So I am a big fan of the president, but when it comes to, you know, the response, especially when it, came, when it comes to the issue of hunger, I am very dissatisfied. I would not, I would not miss, my, miss, miss my word, because, you know, uh, the president is doing an amazing thing in terms of, like, you know, removing the subsidy, it's fraud, you know, unifying the uh, multiple exchange rates. But these policies are known to most likely increase, you know, the burden on the people. So we have to be able to understand that we are doing a procedure. So if, as, a, as a doctor, if you are doing a surgery, you have to control the pain. Otherwise, the patient will not let you complete that procedure. So now Nigerians are in hunger. They are hungry. And there is a direct mathematical correlation between hunger and unrest. And the president is not in a position to even have to deal with that. So when, I think it was on Thursday, when the president's account tweeted that Nigerians need to extricate themselves from importation and called importers rent seekers, I deeply disagree with this. I believe essentially it is the people who are the local manufacturers who have lobbied for this policy of you know, punitive imports, uh, what's called duties and everything, that are the real rent seekers. Because think about it, you just mentioned right now that cement is 15,000 and they want to slash it to 7,000. Are the cement manufacturers telling us they are trying to make a loss for the, for the, you know, for the country? Why is it that there was a ban on importation of essential goods causing market consolidation in the hands of a few people? That is to say, by subsisting these policies, the president is putting his own self and the you know, stability of his administration on the hands of a few players, which does not behoove the people. The president or the government in general should, you know, support the manufacturers, but protect the people, not the other way around. Not that you protect the manufacturers from competition, and then you are now saying you want to support the people. Because we all know that the exchange rate is high right now. So if anybody is importing anything, it is probably just going to be too expensive, and then it will be bad business for them. It's not like the government is giving them any incentive or tax waivers. But in terms of when you have something like food 
insecurity, where the people are hungry. A hungry man is an angry man, and anger boils over. So we don't want to do that. So if there is food anywhere in the world, if it is Japan, if it is Mars that can get on a spaceship, come to Earth, get to our ports, and get to the people, go through our logistics, and get to the table at a cheaper rate, then why is the administration preventing the people from having access to it? That is the question that I don't understand, because that is the only way. I mean, look at the situation whereby, okay, maybe the, the governor of Niger State said this, at least I saw the video, that they want to stop people from buying food in their, what's it called, in their market. Fine. If they want to do that, so far food is coming in from somewhere else, they are the ones that will lose the market share. <clears throat> you started this um, program saying Nigeria is a lot, is a densely populated uh, uh, country. We are a big market. So why are you protecting the market from competition? Why are you giving it in the hands of a few people? When the president announced this policy on June 6, 2003, there was an article that I published in the Punch where I suggested that one of the most important things I suggested was that for the president to end protectionism on food, because food is something that is so basic when you prevent competition, you create monopoly, and then they can use the scarcity to hike price. I don't even see currently an economic reason for any farmer to increase the amount of food that they are producing. Let's just give an hypothetical that if a farmer right now on this, in, under this scarce condition is making 1,000 naira profit, but if he triples his output, that surplus will probably bring the profit down to 300 naira. So why should it work three times more only to earn 10% less than it's earning now? But if you allow competition, then the fight switches from, you know, uh, the, uh, to market share. So everybody will be fighting for market share. We are currently not producing enough food. So we should import. I will give you an historical, not even long, 2022. There was a baby uh, formula plant in the United States. You can Google the soybean plants that got contaminated. This led to a shortage of, you know, food for the babies. What did Joe Biden do? Yes, they tried to stop price gouging. They tried to stop hoarding, but they did a defense production plan, which essentially forced uh, the companies to make milk, like what the president is trying to do with the, you know, planting and uh, demarcating uh, acres for uh, cultivation. But the most important thing was that they had a fly formula operation whereby they went all over the world, reduced their regulatory uh, uh, barriers, and you in infant formulas so that their children will go not go hungry. I right. have a friend whose name is Bola. Right. Um, let me just tell you this story. Okay. Let me let me quickly uh, then, let me quickly jump okay. in. Yeah. yeah. The, the thing is, you said that. Um, there, we don't have enough food. But then this is against what um, the government said. They said we have enough in abundance, even to the extent that they said that they will release more than 1,000 bags of grains you know, for Nigerians. Um, that is just the activities of smugglers and all of that. And it's been in the news. For instance, 15 trucks of smuggled foods um, you know, were intercepted in Sokoto. That's the customs actually intercepted them. Another one, customs also in intercepted truckloads of food heading for Niger Republic. Then the recent one is the government agency which intercepts 50 Niger Republic bound food trucks in Zamfara. So, so, many, all of the, so many of these things, you know, our foods are being shipped out of the, of the country. Uh, it, can you speak to that? You know, the issue of the saboteurs, people who are taking the foods that are supposed to be distributed ac across the country, but to, uh, to other countries. Yeah, thanks for that question, Ibrahim. You know, you mentioned about uh, what's it called? Uh, just now, I think one of the news articles you read said that the people in the silos, there are no food in the strategic grains of grains. But let's assume, you know, all this food gets, what's it called, distributed for 200 million people. All that uh, amount of food that you have mentioned, how long, how many days will it take them to finish it? If somebody wants to sell their food in Cameroon or in Niger Republic, why is that? I mean, that in Niger Republic, we have a blockade. But in Benin Republic of Cameroon, why is that a crime? To be there, if they feel the market in Niger Republic or in, sorry, in Cameroon or Benin Republic is bigger than the market in Nigeria, fine, let them go there and then they lose their market share in Nigeria. It is not the why are they exporting? Why are they smuggling these things? Do you smuggle things that is in, uh, in abundance? Can you go to Ikogo, a warm spring in Nikiti, and say you want to smuggle water or you want to hold water? What you hold 
when you are in the desert, Sakalari desert, and you have a bottle of water, you want to hold it. So it's the only reason why these things are happening is because we obviously don't have enough. There is no way to obfuscate it. We don't have enough. That is the reason why people are hoarding. So if they know that import-free uh, food is coming into the country that everybody will have access to, then they will quickly want to sell because they don't know what is coming or what's going on. You cannot give too few people too much power because this unrest, I am worried about it. I want the president's reforms to succeed. The president's reform is already yielding results and it will take time for everything to snowball and get to the point whereby the people on the street will start to feel it. When things go hard, the people on the streets are the first to feel it. When people, things start to get better, they are the last to feel it. That is the normal thing. So you need to ensure that you are managing their pain. Immediately we announce this thing, we need to, we should have let the food come in. You gave an example right now about people abandoning cars on in at the port when you mentioned in the, in the news. Do you know that I try to ex import a car to the to Nigeria, a car that is worth two thousand dollars here? The Nigerian port authority is asking me to pay four thousand five hundred dollars to just clear it. That is absent shipping cost. And cars are not a thing of luxury; they are a thing of safety. Ever since we started all these punitive import duties, a lot of Nigerians have been dying on the road. And then they will try to blackmail Nigerians to buy made in Nigeria car. And then I ask, where are we making the boats and nuts that cars are using? Where are we making the engine block? Where are we making the plastic for the dashboard, the rubber, everything? We don't make those things. We don't make windshield. So essentially, it is that we are importing cars in parts, complete knockdown, and assembling it. And because of that, a lot of Nigerians are having their lives you know, at risk but because an unsafe car on the road is a danger to everyone. I had a, I had a friend who had an accident in 2018, last year, November, in the same spot in Ojota, he almost had the same accident. In both instances, it was a brake failure because we have not allowed people to bring in uh, you know, good cars. We are punishing them. This is called state capture. The president still walks around with a broken shackle on his car and he has sworn to break all these shackles. So it should break Nigerians' consumers from the captivity that they have been put in for too long, for far too long. Even in the protest picture that you showed just now, it said open border, end suffering. That is what the people of Ibadan are telling you because mm. they know what is going on. Mm. They know what is going on. So we need to ensure that they have food to eat. And the president should not be seeming to be, you know, lecturing people about what they should extricate and what they should not extricate. Like I was going to tell a story of my friend called Bola. He had yeah. a five-year-old son, Sheyi. When Sheyi was, I asked him, if Sheyi is hungry and says, Daddy, I'm hungry, will you tell Sheyi that extricate yourself from me? Your family is in me. Wait for the yam that I'm going to plant in our backyard to, to sprout before you eat. No. My friend Bola will go outside and buy whatever food is available for she to eat. So that Absolutely. is the same thing that our president, Bol, President Bola Tinubu, should do. Go outside, allow import-free, duty-free food to come in. You can even give them incentive, subsidy for two months, three months, six months, so that you can, you know, cushion this thing. Do it. Let I, I like the fact. I like that, so the, that the, your policies. I like the fact that you brought this matter of uh, if. If it is possible, perhaps to introduce subsidy, because we see also that Kenya, who also um, removed fuel subsidy at some point, reintroduced or restated a small subsidy to stabilize the cost of fuel prices uh, for some time in the country. And then that, you know, doused the, the tension and the unrest that was going on in the country. As much as we say we do not want a return to fuel subsidy, IMF has even said that Nigeria is still paying some fuel, uh, paying fuel subsidy uh, when you look at the price. And then if we are to re uh, introduce subsidy into the matter of food imports, how much would that change? It will go ahead and change a lot. It will first off let the people who have who the captors of the Nigerian consumers to know that this clean ground has changed and will go a long way in reducing the price. Competition always brings you know, down prices. And when you are talking about subsidy too, 
Yes, we need to deregulate. The IMF is right about the destination. We should deregulate electricity. We should deregulate, you know, fuel completely. The, the road, the pathway to that destination is what President Tinubu should do. And I would suggest something. You can take away subsidy at the port of entry and put subsidy at the pump for people who are transporting food and maybe people who have buses that are transport, that's transporting 18 or more people. And then let the state governors, at least this subsidy that we have been paying, that we are talking about, the state governors are paying out of it. So let them be the ones in charge and with their local government officials of this subsidy at pump, whereby you can use a simple barcode technology to copy, to you know, scan when you are leaving the market, scan when you are buying the fuel, and scan when you get to your destination. And then you can use that to pay subsidy, some to the transporter, some to the fuel station. Fuel station. And then you are still going to use that to cushion the effect of subsidy removal on both transportation of food and people. And then you are going to be, it is going to be like an opium to you know, calm the nerves and then give the government time for their policies you know, to come to fruition. These are good lofty policies that should have been done since the inception of this country that the president is just trying to do right now. So it should not let hunger to you know, make the people revolt. Because, yes, they say the night is darkest before the dawn. But if you don't allow the people to stay calm through the night, they might cause an arrest that will prevent them from seeing the dawn. So the mm. president is this of strategic importance to him and to, you know, allow these things to get normalized. And I must also talk about the media of, this, uh, of, the, of the president because I think they are doing an F job. They need, they are, I mean, one was on Arise TV, was not even letting anybody talk. They were asking him about nepotism instead of you know stating the the, the resume of the person and say if they don't want it then they should pass a law that will ban it. He was combating and fighting everybody. You know what they should do is we are talking about foreign reserve. Is it the sole responsibility of President Inubu to generate foreign reserve? No, it is the duty of all Nigerians. So you are not blaming them. You are not pointing fingers at them. You are corralling your forces. You are telling them. Come, all of us, let us roll up our sleeves. Let us fight for this country. Let us earn foreign reserve. When Korea had this similar problem, that was what they did. They bounded together. During the 1997 Asian crisis, Koreans donated their family gold and treasuries that was melted as gold that was kept as their foreign reserve. And that, was how, that is why the country is right. uh, you know, enjoying today. So you need to control that narrative Right. How about um, looking at um, the issues that predate the, this current administration, especially when, during the election hearing, when the former CBN governor, uh, Lamido Senussi, said that um, whoever is going to take over the you know, reins of leadership is not going to find it easy, whoever among the top three candidates. Also, the president said that um, it's going to be a very difficult times. And you know, quoting him, he said, I can assure you that I understand the pains you are going through it is not easy to get out uh, of the monster of over 40 years called fuel subsidy. We also advocated, you were also part of those who advocated that fuel subsidy should be removed, you know, before this administration. And now that this has been done, do you feel that the government is at its wit, uh, wit's end? And then what are we saying about the state governors? Are we not too focusing too much of our attention on the, the, the president rather than talking about the, the state government, uh, governors as well as the local governments? You're very right. If I was President Tinubu, I would call a public town hall of all state governors and tell them, yeah, tell your people how you want to attract foreign investment into your state. What do you have? What do you want to do? I will quickly decentralize the policing so that now when there's a kidnapping, you know you are not just looking at President Tinubu. You are now looking at a state, your state governor. What are you doing to keep us safe? Because they are the primary security officer of their states. You have to be able to you know, bring everybody in. It is don't make... Uh, Bola Tinubu, the effigy of everybody's frustration. Call everybody that is responsible. The state governors are hiding. They are not doing anything. They are not, a lot of them are not living up to their responsibilities. Call them out. Let them come and start saying their plans too. You know, the president has he's been the one that has been the most engaging. Calls everybody. He's a true democrat. You know, when it comes to this, like you mentioned, your initial question, the, the, the president, I mean, the government is not at its wit's end. These things are bound to happen when you remove subsidy. That is why I wrote it in, in seven days after the subsidy was removed that you should immediately, you know, 
start doing releasing these uh, you know restrictions on food so that the people don't have problem about food and then even when it comes to the you know uh, palliatives and everything how many of the state governors have even you know done anything with the extra income that they are getting call them to a public uh, tower let them give account of what they have done with the excess extra income that they are using so that everything the eye is not just on the president because if the eye stays on the president alone it becomes an easy target when you diffuse it to all the taxi state governor like it should be that each one of them will have to act then they will use the palliatives and the subsidy money well we must to, give it you know, to some state governors fun. we must give it to some state governors like ogun state Kwara state and even in those states when the fuel subsidy was removed this uh, state governors put in some measures in place that we call palliatives. Some released buses. At those states, for instance, increased uh, the salaries of the workers. We saw some, some level of things done by some governors, state governors. Uh, but, but then again, you, the matter of resource control is also there. If you are saying you are calling a meeting of all governors, what do you have in your states? What can you do? What can to uh, attract foreign investment? We know that there's the matter of resource control, the ex exclusive list and concurrent list and all of it. And recently, the president had a meeting with the state governors where they just agreed to the matter of state policing that we have been calling for. So, so perhaps we might need to start tinkering with uh, the constitution, don't you think? Yes, and they already started like a committee that is supposed to, you know, start it. This conversation should be held publicly and let everybody know. Definitely, there should be resource control. In the United States, we have donor states and, you know, recipient states. Some states like New York, Florida, Texas make too much money. They donate to the federal government. Some are not as viable. Wyoming and Cole, they get money from the federal government. That is the way it should be because when you have resource controls, then the state donors have more power. So we have to bring everybody into you know the into the conversation and you know to redirect the, the what's the conversation we have been talking about you know minimum wage increase i think this is the period whereby they can change the narrative by announcing something they should not they've been talking about this minimum wage increase since last year when the uh, president got in it is eight months right now they should not allow perfection be the enemy of progress announce something so that people have something else to talk about so that they can see an imminent light, you know, at the end of the tunnel. You are controlling their psychology. You are, I mean, you are managing, not controlling, managing their psychological response to things. You are giving them the good news while they are dealing with all these things. So that you can, you have to manage the pain until the healing has occurred. The healing is on its way. You can see the, with, after the CTBN did this thing about MTCO, uh, and he said within a week, $1 billion came in. And this is how it can be. Another avenue for foreign foreign reserve is Nigerians in diaspora. A lot of us are here that you know can invest in things at home that the, you know the administration just needs to you know reach out to let them know the plans and everything. Come and invest at home, and things will start you know looking looking up over the long term. The food uh, that the president is trying to plant will take long term. Security also we need to apply technology. Yeah. We can put drones in the air that will record every single inch of Nigeria within a day. So That's we right. can monitor things with technology. Exactly. Yeah. So they should do all of those things and let us get better. That's right. Um, so very quickly, uh, let me squeeze this in. Uh, we, we do not have a sufficient power supply. And um, recently, the Minister of Power said that uh, the government is owed, that they are owing certain amounts, about 1.3 trillion naira, um, you know, to settle, you know, those who supply them gas and all of that. You know, talk about the electricity value chain, the Genco's, uh, the transmission companies and, 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 all, and all of that. Uh, do you feel that there is need for subsidy to continue or they should remove subsidy and, you know, liberalize this sector completely because we can't continue uh, doing all of that since it has been privatized? But then, again, the more money we pay, the more darkness we've always been getting. Thank you very much, Idris, uh, for mentioning that. It's one of the things I'm very particular about. Subsidy on you know, power needs to go. However, you cannot do it in such a way that you will just be giving people estimated bill. You have to first ensure that every single household has, you know, this prepaid meter and educate them on how, you know, well, I mean, what's it called? Card goes, like how power, how power goes. So that once you take out the subsidy, the Nigeria is dead bit. We can't, we can't, you know, continue this subsidy. And I'm pretty sure they are just not putting eyes on it. There's going to be scam on that, on that side. 
but we can't afford to keep on paying the subsidy. Take away the subsidy and then let people know, in my house right now, the only light that is on is just this one. Every other light in my house is off. And when I leave this place, I'll switch it off because I, am, I know that I am counting what my bill is going to be by the end of the month. When you educate Nigerians that way, they will not you know, be surprised when they get higher electricity bill. So you need to take, off, take it off you know, completely, but you need to do the education part first. Let them know how the metal system works. You know, if you buy 10,000, you can own your refrigerator for this amount of hours, all those kind of things, so that people will start responding to it. Not just that you think you have taken all the subsidy, they just bring one million electricity bill to a, to a hospital that has, only, that has not even made 500,000 naira in a month. You know, so those are the things that need to be done so that you can right. achieve that one too, because by the time they don't, if they don't do it, they will cut another riot. We'll have to leave this conversation here now. We must thank you so much, Dr. Uludai Marindoti, for your time on the program. Thank you. Thanks, Veronica. Thank you, Brian. Right.